I'm in the Amazon rainforest helping you pass your GCSE whilst at the same time trying to stay alive. I'm heading for the most impenetrable part of the forest. There's nowhere to land the chopper, so I'm going to rappel down to the forest floor. I'm um, 45 meters up or so in the canopy. It's a long way down. There's actually four layers uh, to the forest. Uh, you've got the emergent layer, which are the ones that stick out at the top. They're about 50 meters high. And then you've got the understory underneath the canopy. And then you've got ground level, the shrub layer at the bottom. But not a lot of light gets down there. Let's uh, see if we can venture down to that shrub layer. Ah! I'm okay. So here we are, in the shrub layer. Very little grows here because the sunlight can't penetrate all the way down. The forest is just so dense. 45 meters above us is the canopy, which we've just descended through. If you look at the forest floor here, at the bottom of this tree, you'll find there's a triangular shape. This is called a buttress root. And this is how this tree is specially adapted. It's 45 meters tall, and it needs this incredibly wide base to be able to hold itself upright. The other problem in here is the fact that the soil, contrary to popular belief, is really poor quality. It's only about two centimetres of a rich layer called humus. And the reason why these trees are able to grow is because of this rapid nutrient cycling that happens here. And that is because it's hot, it's wet, and it is incredibly humid. Most days start with cloudless skies, and by midday temperatures can reach 33 degrees. The rising hot air carries water vapour high into the sky, forming towering thunderstorm clouds. By mid-afternoon, torrential rainstorms occur. You can almost set your watch by it. I've managed to find a clearing here where the sun is able to get down to ground level. At the North and South Pole, the sun's rays are spread out over a much wider area, and so they have more surface area to heat. But at the equator, those sun's rays are more concentrated. Very narrow band between not and five degrees north and south of the equator. As a result, it gets very, very hot. Ouch! Ow! It's worth taking the opportunity to step back into the forest and look at some of the other adaptations that happen here. Behind me, those woody vines that stretch up from the forest floor, called lianas, they use the taller trees to gain access to the sunlight all the way up there. If they didn't, they wouldn't survive. And the other thing is that the leaves in the forest tend to have drip tips. And the drip tips job is to channel that heavy rainfall so they don't get damaged. I'm in the rainforest trying to help you survive your GCSE and stay alive. The Amazon River drains an area of 2,720,000 square miles. It's made up of 1,100 tributaries, and I'm going to visit one now and see if I can find some food. Okay, I've set a fish trap. Let's see what we've caught. Oh, they're so lucky. Lucky I found some fish. Look at that. So, let's see what this is like. Good bit of fresh fish, good bit of protein. Oh, 
Oh, like fish wrapped in cheese <laughs> with puss inside. But good for the protein, it'll keep me going. The Amazon is 2.7 million square miles. If that was a country, that would make it the ninth biggest in the world. It has about 10% of the world's species of plants, animals and insects. And to be honest, I'm pretty low down on that food chain. So it's about time I've found some shelter for the night. Ah, ow, 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 ow.